Hi, I'm Boss Wang of Primary 6. So right now here, we're still revising our ordinary differential equations. Well, in the last lesson, we have just revised about the homogeneous functions. Whereas, they just have, like for example, In the last lesson, we just had something like this. Okay, this, well, we just make a homogeneous substitution and done. But right now, here, we are going to have something different. We have something different. So we're going to add on a constant. So let's just say with this. So we add on these constants, so that means it will be a non-homogeneous function. So right now here it becomes non-homogeneous. But the first step to this is still substitution, but the type of substitution, I'll explain about it later. So right now we'll need to revise about something else. Yes, we need to revise about something else before we can move on to this type of substitution and why we can add this kind. So, for the type of substitution that we are going to have, we need to know about completing squares. Completing square, this type of method. Just take for example here. So first of all, x, of course, you will satisfy that. Then 2x, you will have to satisfy this, then square. Then after that, you just find out what's left. So these can be the most basic types of completing squares. But what if I move on a little bit? These are all fixed constants and fixed constant coefficients. So what if I just change them? I change them into these types that these constants are all not fixed. So all of these types of constants are not fixed. So why don't we just try using completing squares again? So using this completing squares, you might want to take out or you just factorize an A first. Then you put it in this way. Then in this part, we want to make it something square. And this part is definitely we must have. So let's think about this part. This part, B over A. B over A, you need to have two of the X. So that means this part will actually come from b over 2a. So that means over here, it will be b over 2a. But beware of this. This part, you still have to square it. So it will be b square over 4a square. So when you add on something extra, so you have to subtract. The something extra. Okay, at this part, we have to take these three terms. These three terms. So when we factorize or just make it into something square. It will be in this form. But for the other parts, which is this extra, which you have to subtract it, will be a minus b square over 4a. As you also have to be aware of what's in front, as it has to times this extra a. After you add on this constant.
Yeah, after words for this part, you can comment denominator all of them, which you get for AC, then this part minus B squared. And down here is a 4A. So these are the parts that you will have. Okay, you will have these parts. Let's take a look at all of them. So what if you just find out what is x? Like you just continue on with what is x. So and at the same time, just assuming that this part is equal to zero. Completely square until this part. Now you have to find out what x is. Well, taking it is equal to zero. So if you take that it is equal to zero, so that means you can move this constant part to the other side. So then you need an extra negative or a negative, you can just put inside here and reverse their order. When we take it at zero, we have this part. So let's just go on and find out what is x. x for this part. b squared, so we have to divide this a. Then this square, that means square root. But after you square root, you have to be aware that it might be positive, it might be negative. Then this part, you also move to the other side. And that is how you will find x. So this part. And this is what x is. But you might find that it looks sort of familiar. So let's just try to change it into a form that we actually know. This for a square comes out on this square root is a 2a, so 2a they're all the same, just common denominator. Then we actually found out that it is here. It is actually this part, the quadratic rule. So we actually found out that it is the quadratic rule. So that means we have shown that from all these, completing square, we can get the quadratic rule. But in this quadratic rule part, what else do we have or what is it made up of? Well, first of all, we need to know its different parts. So this we take it as equal to zero. So equal to zero, that means if you write it in a function form, that is actually y that is equal to something if you let this part be a zero so that means y will definitely need to be a zero so that means it is intersections with the x-axis so to intersect with this x-axis it depends on the b square minus 4ac so whether it intersects it depends on this part and in fact this part when it is greater than zero or when it is equal to zero, there are also different cases. So let's take a look at them. So we can find out different intersections with the x-axis. Bigger than zero, bigger than zero. So that means you have plus and minus. So then you have two of these intersections or two of these roots or two of these solutions. So when this part is equal to zero, this part is equal to zero, so then you will not have this whole part behind. But you only have a negative b over 2a. So then you only have one root. Then if this part, you will find out it is smaller than zero, now smaller than zero, that means you will have square root negative something. So you get an i. When you have this i, it actually don't have anything. So you'll get 
zero roots. So these are different parts of what you will get. But why don't we take a closer look at each of these parts about the different things about them. So if we just have y equal to this whole thing, if y is just equal to this whole thing, then this when drawn out, drawn out, it will be a curve. This part you to get a curve. Okay, let's just say for example the curve is like this. So this is a curve that you get. This is one type of them. So let's just say for example that this is y is equal to x squared. But if you have any others, there will be different types of changes happening. So this part, you can find out, because this curve is actually symmetrical, so you can find out where is it symmetrical about. So it is this symmetrical line. So in this case, it will be this y-axis that is symmetrical about. But for these more general cases, we can find out there are symmetrical lines. So for these different parts, to find out their symmetrical line, that means it is somewhere at, if it is concave up, which in this case, we call this concave up. That means we have, that means it is located somewhere around the bottom most point. So, located around this bottom most point. That means what your result in is a negative b over 2a. Well, this a, we're not really sure whether is it a positive, positive becomes concave up, or is it a negative or a concave down. But it's actually all just same like this form. So part of the quadratic equation or this quadratic rule, this first part over here, that means it is actually the equation of the symmetrical line. So this makes a part of the quadratic rule. So at this part, we have found out this symmetrical line. Then other parts, other parts of this equation. So discriminant, you can just show we find it out like this. Extrema, well, extrema. But in this case of extrema, it's just whether it is at this bottom point, which this bottom point specific name can be just called as minima. If it is the other way around, we should find a maximum, it's just the maximum. So we have these two different names for different cases. So right over here, the one that I've drawn here at this position is just a very special case. But since that's just a special case, so why not let me draw a general case? So for general cases, they might not be exactly right at the origin. They might be a little bit above or a little bit below. Like for example over here, this one is above this x-axis. But we can try to find, wait, this one should be pointing outside. Okay. So that means for this, we can try to find a symmetrical line, but this symmetrical line over here, we right now could not get that exact value. We can use this part. This is what it's axis for. And this is part. Okay. 
the answer that we can find out the extra amount. In this case, it is the minimum at this point in time. So like this, for this part over here, is the extra amount. So you get for a C minus B square, then over 40. But for this part, you might have a question right now. And let me guess, your question may be, how is this a negative when it is at the positive side? So my answer to that will be this B, this B over here, is actually a negative. This B should be a negative to get something like this. If you say B is positive, no, A is a negative. If you say A is negative, which is this part, if this A is a negative, then it is concave down. So that's why for me, according to this graph, it should be a B that is a negative. But when we just look at this, wouldn't it seem a little bit harder? What if we just try to change this X and Y axis? Like, you can shift it. You can shift X and Y axis. Shifting the x and y axis. So maybe this easiest way to find it would be this right, this point right at the origin. So perhaps this is the simplest, but can we still use x and y? That's what we know. Since, or unless you use a capital X, capital Y, then possible, but Try not to be confused with it, within it. So how about we use U and a V? So perhaps this part, the X and this Y, the you can call it coordinate frame, would be perhaps right outside here. But you still need to find this U. What is it in terms of X and this V? What is it in terms of Y? So I'll just write it out. So this V would be Y. Wait, this part. V, Y, minus. For this case, it may be like this. But if you want to write it shorter, this part is actually the extra mark, right? If you want to write it shorter, it is just Y. Ex, the y extra mark. If you want to write it in the full form, you can just write the whole thing. U, U for this part, comes from x. So this U from x. So it should be something like this. It will be something like this. Okay. But how about we just write all of these in one form like just add so putting it like this may solve this problem although after you submit these different parts at last, you still need to put convert it back into x and y. And we just straight away write in x and y. So we just made a little bit of conversion here. So for this part, when we write it in terms of u and v, this part is the v, then this part is the u. Okay, so right now here we don't need brackets anymore. It would just be like this. So actually, this, it looks simple, right? But let me just tell you, this is actually one form of the transformation. This form is translation. What translation is just moving this figure around. When you move it around, you can be actually moving this, or you can say it is just moving this coordinates frame. Other types of tr transformations, for example, rotations, reflections, or sharing, all those different types 
Okay, but right now here we're just at translation. So right now here at this part, we already have our U's and V's. So we just need to put them back into our original example. So our original example here then we just let we can let X we let this X be. So this part you have U and let's just say plus X zero or X naught. Then after that it's a Y. The Y that part you also have to change it. So here is the V. Downstairs you can add on Y zero. So these parts well, are just constants in order to make this function later on homogeneous. Then of course we have to find out y prime and y prime is dy dx. So we can differentiate both sides of both of these equations. So this part is dv. Well constants, they all just become zero. So here you have dv, then here you have du. Okay, so this is what you get. But at this point, we need to make these constants all zero. So making all these constants zero. That means when all of these are added together, times together, or you can say as multiplied together, then we need to give zero. Then, since you have the numerator and the denominator, so you can have two simultaneous equations. And this is what you have. So afterwards, you just need to find out what is x0, what is y0. And then, you can put it inside. Anyways, after you found this, you still need to write out that dv, du, this part is a1, so x will be y, I mean u, then y will be v. And just like this. So to continue with all the others, which is and so on. So to continue with all the others, we will use the method in the video last time. So for this part that is homogeneous, we just make another substitution. So if you want to find out more about this method, you can go back to the video last time and watch it. So right now here for this, I'm just going to end it here. So if you like our videos, Subscribe to our channel. So I'll we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you for your watching.